This episode is sponsored by Adhesive Guru. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to uh, my backyard. Welcome back to another sawmill video. Happy mud season, everyone. We have the hazards of ice with the sinking pleasure of mud everywhere you walk. Today, we're gonna to be cutting up uh, this walnut here that my buddy Eric brought me a couple of days ago. He dropped it off, so we're gonna get it sawn up so we can get it into his vacuum kiln and get it dried and get it turned into things and uh, get it sold. It's got a whole bunch of crotches and goofy things going on here, so we should have a bunch of figure and weirdness to this log. So let's, uh, let's carry it over to the saw and get it on there and figure out what the heck or how the heck we're gonna saw this goofy, goofy thing. So now this thing is laying on a bed on a flat plane. It's uh, even more apparent how like strange and and goofy this thing is. Like I've cut some weird stuff, but this is kind of up there. It has so many crotches, and it's got this weird flat spot here, and it's got this like wound scar thing going on on this side. Down here, yeah, we got. A limb coming this way, a limb going that way. This is kind of flat-ish. It's kind of looking flat. It's got kind of a flat vibe kind of going on. So this is one of the ones where I'm like, I don't really know what the heck I'm supposed to do with this. But uh, I think just for shape, general shape and whatnot, I think I'm going to try and get it so that this face here is... Uh, horizontal or flat reference or whatever so that we're kind of parallel to all of this we should expose some of the crotch figure from that some of the crotch figure from this and hopefully that will yield the best like figures figure in the slabs and just best shape uh, overall so I got some finagling to do to roll this thing about 45 degrees that way and get it positioned for real. And, and then we'll see, because <laughs> I could always change my mind. That was very anticlimactic. Okay, with that initial roll, we have a, we have a new plan, I think, because uh, this side is super goofy. I'm not gonna be able to roll this thing and get it positioned well enough is we're missing like a whole chunk of the bottom of the tree. And we got this nubbin thing down here. I don't have a good way of rolling this thing a little bit back and supporting it. So what I think I'm gonna have to do now is uh, roll the whole thing over and put this face here down towards the bed and position it with this kind of, I don't know, wound thing directly down on the bed and hopefully that'll sit a little more nicely than it is now and hopefully it'll be less finagling and blocking as well but uh, as always with this we will see
All right, here we go. Hopefully this is better, but who knows? I think we're lined up. I, I think that's just how it's gonna be. I think we're pretty good as far as elevation goes too. I think the roll's fine. I mean, maybe I'd like to roll this way a little bit. I think I'll try and pick this limb up a little bit and block that limb up. And that should get these two pits more aligned so that this is our actual crotch figure that we're really going for. Now let's just figure out how the heck I'm gonna do that now. Put this here and it should be good. Let's see, let's see how that lays. This is so goofy. All right, well, let's start cutting, I guess. Let's figure out where that first cut's gonna be. Somewhere. Oh my gosh. Oh crap. All right, let's take a quick peek here. A little bit of water. So I think tradition dictates that I say this every time we're cutting walnut. It looks green right now, but as it sits out here and uh, oxidizes a bit, it'll shift from very green to, you know, that more brown purple that we uh, that we know and love. But uh, looks like we're gonna have a little bit of compression figure here below this giant limb, which we would expect. Otherwise, actually, we're gonna have some pretty decently wide boards coming out of here with these uh, big old bullseye things. Let's get this first one off of here, Ugh. if we can. Why they send the little guy? There we go. These are gonna get big. All 
right, number two. This looks kind of big. Oh! Need more ass. Oh! Static friction. So the nice thing about today's slab and adventure is that uh, since these are going to go into uh, Eric's vacuum kiln right away, I don't have to worry about stacking these things for any sort of air drying or conventional kiln drying with stickers because they're going to go right into the vacuum kiln with the plates and everything. So uh, I don't have to flip them at all. I don't have to sticker them nicely. I don't have to make a nice pile. I can just throw them in a stack for them where you hit a nail. Nice. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, well, we got some crash figure, and we got some compression figure, and we got a metal inclusion, and whatever the heck this is. This craziness down here. I'm gonna send him a picture of this nail. Tell me, screwed up my saw. All right, well, I'm dressed for the occasion. Let me get my hoodie off. What do you think? Metal inclusion. We did it, yet again. More metal. I'm freezing. While I'm putting my hoodie back on, let's talk about this video sponsor. Adhesive Guru's Instant Adhesive CA Glue is an incredibly useful and valuable tool to have in the shop. It is effective on many common surfaces, such as metals, most plastics, woods, ceramics, glass, fabrics, rubber, and leather. It has a strong bonding effect it can also be used for industrial purposes. And when using the activator, the adhesion time is reduced from minutes down to 10 to 12 seconds. CA glue is incredibly handy to have in the shop, so here's a few examples of ways you can use it. Even if we are incredibly careful, sometimes we do have a little bit of chip out with our work pieces. So as long as you can find the piece, a little bit of adhesive and a quick shot of the activator, and that piece is reattached to your workpiece, and it's like you didn't have a problem at all. Another application is going to be temporary clamping. So if you're doing a template routing, that's going to be a great way to temporarily affix your templates to your work pieces. And if you're working on something that's too awkward or cumbersome to hold down to your workbench, a little bit of CA glue will hold that work piece in place as you're working on it. Adhesive Guru's Instant Adhesive is available in four different sizes depending on the needs of your shop. And there are links down in the description where you can check these out. Thanks Adhesive Guru for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the sawmill. Down to number three already, which is great. This is actually, seems to be working out pretty well. I think of all of the, uh, the weird stuff I've had on the saw, normally, like, I feel like some level of confidence, even when I'm unsure about how I'm gonna position a weird log to saw it. This one is the first time I felt like I may have it wrong, but it seems to be going okay. At least I feel a little bit reassured at this point in my life. We'll see if that continues as we get further down through the stack. Missed a little bit. That's not that much water. All right, we got a little bit of water here. Let's see, woohoo! Actually, that worked. Good coverage. It's wood, I don't know. I don't got much. That's a lot of clear walnut all the way up through here. We've got our bullseye with our figure things going on around here. So between the bark, kind of in the, in the middle here, you got 30 inches already. Well, was this, slab three? Yeah, so we're not even that far into it yet. Oh, this log is, that's 36 already down there. What is this thing, like four feet? Oh, wow. Yeah, we're like, 50 inches down there at the butt. So I guess this is a pretty big log too. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what's next. This is big. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but it, this is kind of big. Like bigger than I thought it was. It looked a lot smaller sitting in that snowbank up by the barn. All right, here we go. 
That is big. Where's that tape thing? Oh, let's see what we got. This is, this seems like an increase in width quite a bit. Yeah, we're at 36 now between the bark. That's, that's a big slab. And it's kind of unfortunate with all these chainsaw cuts though, because they're kind of like all over the place. There's those ones, and then there's the remnants of a couple up here, which kind of get into the sapwood, you know, and up here too. So there's a lot of errant chainsaw cuts. We have whatever this is, some kind of crazy bark inclusion thing up in this general area. And hopefully, I think we got like, what, three or four more slabs to go before we start getting into the actual crotch figure, which I'm actually trying to get to. These are nice, but I'm trying to get to the crotch ones. Okay. So that's basically all sapwood. <laughs> There's just a little bit of heartwood here and the rest is sap. I wasn't really expecting anything out of this. It's just kind of our first initial kind of facing cut. And I would just keep cutting all the way down to the bed. I'm using the lumber scale today. So very easy to just go and make all your cuts. First one's pretty much all sap. We'll take a quick look at it in a second, but let's see what's going on with this crazy one here. That's a nice slab. That one's all sapwood, except right here. Not really anything going on with this one. Let's look at this guy. So back when the log was still whole, we had those furrows on top. And for some reason, it's showing up here in this cut, but it's not in the, the top cut. So I don't really know what's going on with that. But regardless, that furrow makes for some really vivid and interesting green smack dab up the center of the slab. And we have this uh, bit of figure and this knot thing up there too. So this is actually very promising. I'm excited to see what the next one looks like. 
And then up here, we have some crotch figures starting to form here. I think there was, when we got that limb there, we had something else going on up here anyway, but we got some crotch figures starting to form here. Kind of, kind of ruined by all the, the chainsaw cuts though, because this would have been a lot of more kind of figured area up in here. So that's a little on the unfortunate side, but you know, it is what it is. We got the rest of the, the, uh, the slab out of it at least. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on, especially up in here. This is what I was hoping would happen. As we got enough of the crotch stuff going on that we do have some figures starting to show. So we have the crotch figure, which was starting to show before. We still have this chainsaw cut here, but at least a lot of the figure is still there and preserved. And as we get down, we had that furrow kind of stain thing again, and we got that, that knot with some figure around it. And for the buttress down here, we do have a little bit of figure. You can see some compression <laughs> coming in like that. And they've got the swirly stuff down here in the actual buttress there. I overshot it, a little bit of an overshoot. Okay, this is getting good. This is getting better. You're getting big. Let's see, where are we at? This is like the widest, I think. 51 through there and kind of this little narrow area here is still uh, 36. Then we're splaying back out to 45 down here. So that's actually like a really good single slab table thingamabobber. And you can see up top there's all kinds of uh, crotch figure starting to show here. So the next one should have all of this crotch figure in it. We got some more figure over there with that, uh, that chainsaw cut thing going on. And we do have this bit of oxidation here from this wound. So the rest of the slab will come more into this color from this uh, icky green look that it has now. This is cool. You guys get this bark inclusion here from this wound. That's very cool. Let's see how crotchy this thing is. Oh, there's a sawmill there. Yeah, that's a good one. Look at all this. You got a nice chunk of crotch figure through here, and we got a little bit still on that side there from uh, what was going on on that side of the tree. So this is actually a pretty good sized limb. I'm really glad. Finally, I'm glad that 
I cut this thing in the orientation I did because I was really, really stressed out about that. But it has, uh, I think it's worked out really well. We got a lot of width here. We got a lot of figure, a lot of things going on. Just really nice slab in general. Unique shape, unique grain and weirdness here. We got this uh, bar conclusion rot thing going on here. And just, I don't know, it's beautiful. Just generally beautiful slab. Good job, slab. All right, let's take a look at this thing. So we've got some actual crotch figure now, finally. We're at 32 inches long of all this beautiful figure through here. And you can see all the rippling of the, uh, the figure as it kind of emanates from the, the junction of these two limbs. We were almost through the remainder of the crotch figure on that side. And I think with this one being cortisone, the nice straight grain lines really adds a nice background to the absolute, it's like pop in nature of uh, the crotch figure here. So the rest of the uh, the length there is all just really nice straight grain cortisone stuff. We do have the pith line right here, which is the center of the tree as it was growing up. So you can see all the limbs that it started out with along the way as it rose from the ground up to the sky. Last one. That's pretty good loft. This is cool. We got some more Coruscant grain and the pith line thing. Got some nice banding of uh, figure here in this one. And again, just some subtle Coruscant grain for the rest of the slab with that nice split. Kind of offset to one side. So there we go. This actually yielded some really amazing and awesome slabs. And again, I wasn't totally sure this was going to work out, but it did kind of work out for the most part. You know, the the thing with salvaged logs and things is you never kind of know what condition they're going to be in as they're taken down. So this would have been a lot nicer if this limb kind of at least came out to here a little more and we didn't have the chainsaw cuts up in here and whatnot. But that's just part of the game and you, you kind of do with uh, what you can with these things and hopefully you get something that's actually usable and something decent and at least I feel like I did a decent job of getting something usable out of this log so hope you enjoy this kind of fun quick one definitely a lot faster to be out here cutting these logs we don't have to like stack or sticker them you just throw them in a pile and it's someone else's problem <laughs> it's super nice so that's gonna do it for this one Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking. That is very cold, actually.